Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV. Guys, we're gonna be reacting to putting most insane moment in Tucker Carson interview. Guys, this has been blowing up. Guys, let's get straight into this. Who blew up Nord Stream? <laughs> you for sure. I was busy that day. <laughs> I mean, have you achieved your aims? Uh, no, we haven't achieved our aims yet, because one of them is the Nazification. This means the prohibition of all kinds of neo-Nazi movements. This is one of the problems that we discussed during the negotiation process, which ended in Istanbul early this year. Would you be satisfied with the territory that you have now? I will finish answering the question. You just asked the question about neo-Nazism and denazification. Look, the president of Ukraine visited Canada. This story is well known, but being silenced in the Western countries. The Canadian Parliament introduced a man who, as the Speaker of the Parliament said, fought against the Russians during the World War II. Well, who fought against the Russians during the World War II? Hitler and his accomplices. It turned out that this man served in the SS troops. He personally killed Russians, Poles and Jews. The SS troops consisted of Ukrainian nationalists who did this dirty work. The president of Ukraine stood up with the entire parliament of Canada and applauded this man. How can this be imagined? The president of Ukraine himself, by the way, is a Jew by nationality. Really, my question is, what do you do about it? I mean, Hitler's been dead for 80 years. Nazi Germany no longer exists. And so, true. And so, I think what you're saying is you want to extinguish or at least control Ukrainian nationalism. But how? How do you do that? Послушайте меня. Ваш вопрос очень тонкий. Listen to me. Your question is very subtle, and I can tell you what I think. Do not take offense. Of course. Can you imagine a scenario where you sent Russian troops to Poland? Only in one case, if Poland attacks Russia. Why? Because we have no interest in Poland, Latvia or anywhere else. Why would we do that? We simply don't have any interest. It's just threat-mongering. Well, the argument, I know you know this, is that, well, he invaded Ukraine, he has territorial aims across the continent, and you're saying unequivocally you don't. It is absolutely out of the question. You just don't have to be any kind of analyst. It goes against common sense to get involved in some kind of a global war. And a global war will bring all humanity to the brink of destruction. It's obvious. There are certainly means of deterrence. They have been scaring everyone with us all along. Tomorrow Russia will use tactical nuclear weapons. Tomorrow Russia will use that. No, the day after tomorrow. So what? In order to extort additional money from US taxpayers and European taxpayers in the confrontation with Russia in the Ukrainian theater of war. The goal is to weaken Russia as much as possible. Who blew up Nord Stream? <laughs> you for sure. I was busy that day. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, it, do you have, do you have, <laughs> uh, I did not blow up Nord Stream, uh, <laughs> thank you though. <laughs> you personally may have an alibi, but the CIA has no such alibi. Do, do you have evidence that NATO or the CIA did it? You know, I won't get into details, but people always say in such cases, look for someone who is interested. But in this case, we should not only look for someone who is interested, but also for someone who has capabilities. 
because there may be many people interested, but not all of them are capable of sinking to the bottom of the Baltic Sea and carrying out this explosion. These two components should be connected. Who is interested and who is capable of doing it? Services, your intel services, you would, that NATO, the US, CIA, the West did this. Why wouldn't you present it and win a propaganda victory? <laughs> In the war of propaganda, it is very difficult to defeat the United States because the United States controls all the world's media and many European media. The ultimate beneficiary of the biggest European media are American financial institutions. Don't you know that? So it is possible to get involved in this work but it is cost prohibitive, so to speak. We can simply shine the spotlight on our sources of information and we will not achieve results. It is clear to the whole world what happened and even American analysts talk about it directly. We negotiated with Ukraine in Istanbul. We agreed. He was aware of this. Moreover, the negotiation group leader Mr. Arachamiya is his last name, I believe still heads the faction of the ruling party, the party of the president in the Rada. He still heads the presidential faction in the Rada, the country's parliament. He still sits there. He even put his preliminary signature on the document I am telling you about. But then he publicly stated to the whole world, we were ready to sign this document, but Mr. Johnson, then the Prime Minister of Great Britain, came and dissuaded us from doing this, saying it was better to fight Russia. They would give everything needed for us to return what was lost during the clashes with Russia. And we agreed with this proposal. Look, his statement has been published, he said it publicly. Can they return to this or not? The question is, do they want it or not? Further on, President of Ukraine issued a decree prohibiting negotiations with us. Let him cancel that decree. And that's it. We have never refused negotiations, indeed. Evan Gershkovitz, who's the Wall Street Journal reporter, he's 32, um, and he's been in prison for almost a year. Uh, this is a huge story in the United States, and I just want to ask you directly, without getting into the details of it or your version of what happened, if as a sign of your decency, you would be willing to release him to us and we'll bring him back to the United States. We so made a of we have done so many gestures of goodwill out of decency that I think we have run out of them. We have never seen anyone reciprocate to us in a similar manner. However, in theory, we can say that we do not rule out that we can do that if our partners take reciprocal steps. When I talk about the partners, I, first of all, refer to special services. Special services are in contact with one another, they are talking about the matter in question. There is no taboo to settle this issue. We are willing to solve it. But there are certain terms being discussed via special services channels. I believe an agreement can be reached. Hmm. Guys, I feel Putin is a very smart man. Like, he thinks about what he wants to say and takes his time to answer it. I feel one of the things Putin is actually strongly against is the fact that NATO wants to enter. Like, these are their territory. Like, just stay off. I understand the fact that it happened before and more like everybody is saying a war is not going to start, but like, I feel the best way you can learn and proceed, like be successful in life, is if you take note of your past mistake. And I feel that is what Putin is all about. Like that is what he wants. Like that is what he stands for. He does not want the mistake that happened before to repeat itself. And like it's very understandable. Like I don't get the reason why people want to penetrate where it's not yours. Like I feel the Ukrainians. I feel the president of Ukraine. I honestly believe that he was. I won't use the word deceived, but 
I feel manipulated to signing some document that resulted to, from certain things. But like, who am I to say? Guys, let's just like, share, subscribe to my channel. This is actually for educational purposes. Thank you. Guys, I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.